Hi, I'm Dave Tollington, a Canadian friend. I first laid eyes on Twyla back in 2010 in Burt's. She appeared to be in exactly the same mode I was in, sitting off by herself, detached, observing. Of course, little did I know that she was the wife of the pianist playing up on stage. But I soon learned that was the enigma that was Twyla, very much off to the side, but very much at the center of things, once you knew the real situation. Before long, Bill and Twyla became friends and they invited me to stay over after a late night at the club. In the morning, Bill slept off the previous night's gig while I rose at my usual early hour with Twyla already downstairs and greeting me with, Good morning, sleepyhead. She then invited me to join her for a stroll over to her favorite coffee house, and picking up on the vibe that this was her special time of day, we sat mostly in silence while she read the newspaper. I'd learned long ago that some of the best conversations were conducted in silence. And when we returned to the house, Twyla said I was welcome to stay anytime. Over the years, Bill and Twyla introduced me to wondrous delights at the Bangladeshi and Yemenite restaurants in their curious city. To me, an amazing island of kaleidoscopic culture and friendly faces. They seemed to know everybody, with the two of them having actively sought out contact, both from an insatiable appetite to learn and from a deep sense of humanity. This was all about neighbors, friends, and fellow citizens. We would also meet up in London, Ontario for a world music festival held every summer. And there, Twyla held her ground in musical knowledge and knowing what she liked as we floated from stage to stage, culture to culture. Along the way, I got to know a very special friend of Twyla's, DJ Holiday. DJ was an, an extraordinary spirit who lived in an abandoned house and would walk through the snow just to sing her one song at Burt's. Though Twyla would drive her there and back whenever she could, I assumed the task whenever I was in town and was shocked at the condition in which she lived. Twyla had tried for years to get her into a home, but DJ was feral. She'd even attempted to escape from a hospital when Twyla had brought her there after a severe attack of COPD. DJ was afraid of institutions and Twyla agreed that at least the abandoned house afforded her a degree of control over her life, an element that had been lethally absent throughout most of her existence, having been severely abused since a very young age. I told two friends back in Canada about DJ and one had said that people like her couldn't be helped. The other said life was all about the decisions we make, not understanding that life had imposed its own decisions on DJ. Oddly enough, both friends purported to be Christians, though in my opinion, Twyla was more Christian than either of them in the righteous sense of the word. In 2019, Twyla and Bill asked if I would house sit Tanya the dog for a week, and I did. While there, they emailed a request that I present a proposal to the Hamtramck City Council regarding the location of a Bangladeshi mural they'd helped organize. So that I did as well, and with the resolution having been passed in my presence, I walked back to the house with renewed hope that if such a diverse group could make such things happen in Hamtramck, there was still hope for the world. Then the bad news came, and for the first time since COVID hit, I returned to Detroit to spend some time with Bill. That first evening, Bill had just come back from a gig and he told me how he would always discuss what had happened at the gigs with Twyla, which she usually attended. But Twyla, of course, wasn't there. And so we stayed up till 3 a.m. with Bill talking almost exclusively about Twyla. After 56 years of marriage, what else could he do? The next morning, Bill tried to avoid meeting anyone on the street. The polite questions about Twyla's worsening condition were too difficult to handle. But when we nipped into a Yemeni grocery store, the owner stood waiting for us at the door as we left, explaining to me that he'd known Mr. Bill for 22 years and asked after Twyla. Looking crestfallen with the news, he then formally presented Bill with a box of date squares he'd been holding since he first spotted us making the effort to explain that they were good with coffee and that Bill was to enjoy them with his friend. 
methods such as Hamtramck. The next day, we decided to attend a Women in Black march in Hamtramck. With Twyla having started the local chapter, the marchers were going to hold a silent vigil for her. And so we drove over to Conant Street, met the group, and stood in silence for Twyla. When the minute was over, someone thrust a Say No to War sign into my hand, and I found myself embarking on my first ever protest march. And as I walked down the street carrying the sign, I could feel Twyla nearby, smiling, shaking her head, and murmuring, It's about damn time. Thank you, Twyla. Thank you for so much.